you have two important things that you need to have in your life. One, you need to focus and to fight to, uh, to your dreams is super important. Your personal, your business, you need to find a purpose and you need to fight it. Um, and... Welcome to the EOpreneur podcast, where EO, the Entrepreneurs' Organization, invites members from all around Europe to talk about entrepreneurship and how you can improve your life, your family, so many different things. In today's episode, we're going to talk a lot about a lot of things. Real estate, how to build new concepts of marketing, how to make a change and an impact in a very old traditional industry. And for this, I have a very special guest from... Um, Portugal, based in Madrid. Jose, how are you? Well, I'm fine. And you? Everything is okay, yeah. Um, I'm very happy to have you. Um, I have to be honest with all our guests, um, so I'll do that the same with our audiences. We recorded a half-baked episode. We had some issues, and I feel this was so interesting that I had to do it again. So thank you for taking the time and recording again with me. I really appreciate it. How have you been the last two weeks? We haven't spoken. How are it's, things? Summer? Yeah, it's well. It's first. It's a pleasure to speak with you and to share my views and my experience with with uh, with the audience. So it's really a pleasure. No, so no worries. Uh, if we need to repeat, hopefully not. But if we need to repeat ten more times, I don't have any any problem. So um, uh, basically, I'm enjoying sunny Portugal uh, in my in my beach house. With the family, working half of the day, enjoying the other half of the day, so things are going quite well. Yeah. So for people who don't know you, I'm going to ask you to do a quick elevator pitch, um, family, business, where you live, whatever you want. Take it from here, my friend. <laughs> okay, so 47 years old, Portuguese. Um, but living in Madrid, um, married uh, with an, an amazing architect, uh, two kids that we adopted in the end of last year from Brazil, nine uh, and 12, uh, almost nine. Uh, uh, my youngest will do the nine years old in three weeks. So nine and 12, uh, two, amazing, two amazing girls, uh, only child. Um, Coming from a, an entrepreneur's uh, family, my my father ran in uh, in the past fishing boats, um, and my mother always worked in hotels, hospitality, that are basically the two main economic drivers of my hometown, that is Zimbra. Um, I work in real estate from the past twenty five years, I'm based in Madrid, where is our holding company. But my heart is Portuguese. <laughs> my heart is in Portugal, always. Um, aside this, I'm a professor in universities. I'm uh, the president of my group of professionals in Portugal. I uh, do lectures. So I very, very busy life. <laughs> Happy and busy life. How often do you travel between Madrid and Lisbon? Uh, almost every week. Um, so I, I'm, I always to balance family, business, school, etc. So my I, I always try to be away from home the, um, the shorter time possible. So sometimes it's more heavy for me because I do a lot of going on the first plane in the morning and coming back on the last plane of that day. So not, not sleeping away from home. Um, so, but th I, that's why I don't feel immigrant. Because the, the, the flight between Portugal and Spain is 50 minutes uh, between Madrid and Lisbon. And I, every week I, I, I come to Portugal. Uh, so, so it's almost like you live in a place and you need to travel to commute to other city. It's basically what I feel. So I live in Iberia and I commute be between Madrid and Lisbon. It's usually what I tell people. <laughs> It's interesting, you know, I live in Israel and Tel Aviv to Haifa where traffic will take you an hour drive. So it's kind of similar and the same thing. Um, before we deep dive into business, entrepreneurship and everything, you adopted uh, two young kids from Brazil at the same time. Tell us a little bit about it. Like, how is it? How is it going? 
Well, um, I think being an entrepreneur helped a lot because entrepreneurs focus on purposes and fight uh, against all the problems. So we beat all the records in Iberia. So we basically started the process in November, October, November 2019. Um, the average time it takes an adoption in Iberia is around the best scenario, three to four years. And we completed our in two years with the COVID in between. Um, so manage documents from all entities, traveling to Brazil with all the restrictions in terms of traveling, etc. It was an, an amazing experience. But when you are fighting for your happiness, you don't have any problems and you go like this. And that's what happened. So we dealt with all the legal problems, with all the things that we need to deal with. Everything, it was a big fight, but uh, our purpose is, was our, it was our happiness and the happiness of our new kids. So it was an amazing process. We, we went to Brazil in the end of November, where we met our two amazing girls there. Uh, we stayed for two months in Brazil, dealing with all the legal, etc. And then we came back to Madrid in the end of January. Um, and we started our amazing life new school, new methods and new things that you need to deal uh, is when you just you and your partner is one thing when you need to keep. But as, as I said, Nir, uh, when you're fighting towards your happiness, uh, you don't have any obstacles and you need to go like this. That's, that's the main thing you need, you need to focus. Was this always your mentality to take a, a goal, set that and drive through it? get to that goal? Was that always, were you like that as a kid? Nir, uh, the best way to, to answer you this is when I was in kindergarten with five years old, five years old, I organized the Christmas party of the, of the kindergarten. <laughs> so I, I think it's the best way to tell you this is that I, I was always the kid, the, the young guy, the man that, what was super focused for the purposes if when I was very, very young. Um, almost every time of my life, I was focused on the half full bottle, not the half empty. So I'm, I'm for nature a positive guy uh, and uh, I'm a fighter. Since, since I think I was born, as my mother says, since the first day of, of coming into the world, I was an amazing fighter. I had a, a massive health problems when I was very young. Um, probably, I think this helped to be a fighter. Uh, but since the first day. Uh, so I, I think I was born like this. It's in my DNA. So you said real estate for 25 years, but what? how did you start? What did you study? What was your process until you got through owning your own business? And being completely honest with you, Nir, when I was quite young, I, I always thought... I want to be something that can allow me to retire very young. <laughs> so <laughs> that was my main purpose in life um, and to feel happy with what I was doing. Okay. So I remember when I was very uh, numbers and money and accounting. So that, that part always was amazing for me since I was very young. When, when I was, when I was very young, I had a notebook when I put all the money my aunts, my neighbors gave me as presents. <laughs> so I will always like like this when I was very young. And I remember being with 10, 11 years old, passing in front of a, a broker with the ads of the houses and thinking, how they get to that value? What What is behind that value? And being very young about that. So when I went to economics and financing, and the first opportunity came, I, I, I thought about two ways, or hospitality, because I was born inside an hotel, my mother managed hotels. So I, I, one of my passions is hospitality, hotels, tourism, but also real estate. And when the opportunity came, I grabbed it from, since the first day. And happily married with real estate, uh, it, I will do 25 years next October that I start working in real estate. What, what did you Pfizer. study though? Today you teach. What did you study initially? Finance? 
I, I studied economics and finance, okay? Um, that in some ways related with real estate, uh, which is funny because the best the best class I had in, in, in economics was probably the one that is more related with real estate. So on that, on the, on the university, I already had that feeling because in the 90s in Portugal, you didn't have anything in terms of studies related with real estate. You didn't have anything, no master, no post-graduation, anything. Now you have dozens of that. So if you wanted to go to real estate, you needed to build your knowledge from scratch, from the expertise, not from learning, because you did have that in Portugal at that time. So you finish what happened. You finish your studies, then you go to um, work. You open immediately. You open your company. You go to work for someone. How does that? What was the next step? No, 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 no. So um, even being a, 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 from a family of entrepreneurs, what I I started in an international company doing advisory in the 90s that was the beginning of the boom of real estate in portugal which was amazing because a lot of things was happening what was happening in portugal uh, i did a lot of feasibility studies valuations i was every day in the street doing valuation it was the best experience i may have people that start today they don't have that opportunity because the market is more stable at that time uh, cities were growing, everything was happening, changes in infrastructures. It was an amazing period to start on, on real estate. Um, but I spent almost 20 years working for others, international companies. Some of them with very strict rules about the way they manage people, the way they manage business, uh, with probably a lack of creativity and after a lot, a, lo- a, lo- a long time of working for others and seeing that they were not taking opportunities, they were not managing people the best way possible, I said, mm, this is not for me. I don't want to have 20 more years in my life working like this and not taking advantage about, of the expertise. of it. So that's when I decided to leave and I did a partnership with my current business partner to at, at that time, my company that calls Aura, um, it was a startup created by my business partner. And basically, I came to grow the company, to expand to other markets. We expand to Portugal, then Italy, Greece, now South America. Um, but the, the biggest purpose of that change was to completely change the way people in real estate were um, treated. Uh, business in real estate were basically uh, followed. And um, that's after these six, seven years, it's the biggest achievement is to know that I'm doing the things in a different way and it's bringing results. Because sometimes it's not just changing things, it's when the results come and the market acknowledges and you are growing because it makes really you sense. You mentioned working for someone else for 20 years and seeing all the bad things. How important is it? I see a lot of young entrepreneurs today. They leave, they start their own business. How important do you think it is to go, be, be the apprentice, learn from someone? I know I did it for 10 years. Uh, you did it for 20 years. We know a lot of people who've done it for years. Um what do you think about it, the, the being an apprentice, learning from someone? Well, um, I think the experience and learning from, from, from others is super important. Super important because it's probably one of the ways for you to know what you want to do and the way you want to do. Because if you don't have an, any idea about how to do it, you don't know if it's the right or wrong, if you are not feeling that experience. So I always say that even imagine I have several friends that created companies, big companies, and they are now dealing with a transition for the kids, for example. And one of the things I say is the kids need to experience other things, go outside for four or five years, experience and then come back. Um, And so the experience, I think it's super important because it's important for you to know exactly what you want, what you don't want. And sometimes you learn very good things. I had had very good mentors about managing business and about more on the technical side. 
On the technical side, I had the best mentor, mentors I can have, I can have in the past, but not on the management side. Because one of the things you see in, in, company, in companies in Portugal, I think it's worldwide, but sometimes the best technic, technicians are not the best managers. Um, and I see a lot of people growing in the companies uh, to very senior levels because they were very good technicians and they were they were doing the things in a very good way but they don't know how to manage companies how to manage resources human resources etc uh, it's very difficult to find a good manager a good manager of people and a good um, uh, technician in the same in the same person um, so I learned several things from different kinds of people that's when I saw what was the the, the way I wanted to follow so I think that experience is super important. You're considered a very outspoken person within a very traditional country, a very traditional industry um, about um, being uh, openly gay and all the things. Um, I've heard from a few EO members that you're very vocal and very promoting. How was it to start in a very traditional industry? Did you... Do you think that made you better this this drive? Do you think those were not open to you? Can you give me a little bit of a glimpse so I understand? Yeah, well, um, you need to manage, you need to include that two important things. Well, real estate market, it's a very conservative market. Uh, it's um, It started with the construction guys, so very manly. <laughs> um, even... Uh, um, now it's a little bit different, but when I started, you almost didn't have any women working in real estate, even on advisory. I'm not talking about construction, but even on advisory, you didn't have any women working in real estate. Now you have a few, but you are, so it's very manly, very conservative, things doing with procedures like these. And, and also Portugal is an amazing country, but it was very Catholic, um, with some ideas about, about the perfect family. Uh, I remember when I, in my hometown, um, the first time I, saw, I, I, I was connected with a couple that was divorced, it was when I went to university because it, it, Portugal, it, was, uh, it changed a lot in the last two, three decades, but it was a very conservative country. Oh, 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 nowadays is completely different, but I, I basically fall. It was not. It was not always amazingly beautiful. The so sometimes it's difficult. But I, I saw an opportunity that the best way to fight um, these conservative mindsets and some people that are a little bit homophobic, etc is to show them that you are like them, that you are normal, that you have a family, that um, uh, you don't do a lot of things that in their minds are completely out of the norms of the day. So I'm a normal guy. That I pick my, I, I go to the college with my kids. I prepare lunch. I, I manage a house. So I'm, I'm not different in everything with probably a couple of, of, of exceptions uh, from them. And people in real estate change. And I have a lot of people that tells me nowadays that they change the way they look. And this is one of my big uh, uh, things that I, I, get, I got in, in my life is that people get, get to me and say, you change the way I look to the gay community, to globally being different, okay? Because you basically told us that you are like us in everything in your life, but then you change something um, that is not exactly the same as everybody have. So um, it was a long process, but doing the things, the most normal thing and not showing in their faces, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay every day, it, that I think it's it's not the best approach. You say no, I'm like you, I'm like you. Um, and it was the best way to it's change. Interesting. This. Um, you say I'm like you. I believe everyone is the same. We're just different in certain things, but we are all very similar. 
And I applaud you because I believe, you know, um, I always tell my friends, I'm, I'm the most average person you'll meet. I'm average size, average weight, average, everything's very average. And I like it. And I'm very average. But you are leading a change. And I like the fact that even with the struggles and everything, especially in a very um, traditional culture and industry, that you have decided to push through and say, I own it, I will change it, and, and leading that. And I really appreciate when I meet people like that. I think that's, at least for me on a personal level, it's inspiring, and thank you for sharing. How was it in going to teach, for example? Were you automatically accepted? Was it different? Well, I was, I in my company, in my companies, I trained a lot of people. So the teaching process was already something that I had in my life since a long time ago. Um, and when the new, let's say, uh, trainings, masters came into Portugal, and with the knowledge I had, I was one of the first uh, professionals to be invited to be a part of this. Of this. And it was amazing. Um, because one of the things I, I have... I have two passions in teaching. One is to share my views, not just the technical ones, but by experience. A huge part of my classes is sh sharing of experience. I did this, it happened this in one specific case. So I'm not telling to, to, to value this as you need to follow these methods. One plus one is two. No, no, my classes is not like this. Is that... Ten years ago, I had a very complex hotel to value, and this was the challenge. Uh, so that's the way I do. And then the second thing is the connection that we lost a little bit with these online classes and with COVID, etc. But when I'm in class, I want to be facing face to face with the students, and I'm the guy that is walking across the the room. I'm not the guy that is in front showing things. I'm I'm going there, and I. And usually I'm quite controversial because I say things that usually the other professors don't say. So I, I don't I, I don't show just the perfect world. I also uh, show them the problems, the things that they will have in their lives. Give me an example. For example, one of one of the classes I do is ethics. Okay, is uh, ethics in real estate. I'm I'm one. I, I'm the, the only professor in Portugal that is allowed to do ethics in real estate. Um, and my ethics classes is uh, all about the bad things. It's not, you need to be perfect. You need to manage conflicts. You don't need to value things from your family. Now, I always say, I went, for example, one of the, uh, one of the things that happened in Portugal in, in, uh, in some real estate projects that were on sale, new projects, they used... Um, arguments uh, to sell apartments that put away other people in the society, for, for example. And I, I, I give these examples to show them that it's, this is not the way we need to address real estate, to address marketing, to address and, and uh, people. So I always, for example, very technical thing, how to value an apartment. Okay, the other professors say you need to use this method. No, I say in your real life, you will need to fight about lack of comparables. You will not have transactions. You need to speak with brokers. You need to have a network. That's what they want to hear. It's not they don't want to hear. This is the amazing method. Nowadays, you can go to Google. You can go to YouTube and have online classes. What they want to have is professors with experience not professors that they don't leave universities to the real world. And that's the biggest difference. I think I'm from the other professors, and I say this openly in classes to other professors, is that I'm a real guy, a guy that comes from the real world, not the guy that comes from the libraries, from the universities that don't have any connection. It's amazing in several areas, not in real estate. Real estate, you need to feel the brick. You need to be in the ground. You need to understand what are the challenges. You know, I, I started teaching in 2014 in colleges and uh, now I teach in um, universities and uh, the Global MBA and stuff. So I completely understand what you're saying. And um, sometimes we even divide the class by saying, hey, so this is what it's supposed to be. This is reality. 
Now, if you fill in the gap, you have a business or, or you have a new way of doing marketing. And I think that's industry. What we've, we've, we've talked a lot about the way you see things, and I love that. Let's jump a little bit into the real estate industry. Um, what type of real estate do you focus on today? So basically, um, uh, I was always focused on advisory. Okay, so uh, basically when a client needs to, to buy a house, to buy an hotel, to buy a shopping center or to manage, I'm, I was the guy that put a value on the, on the asset and much more than that, see and analyze data to, to try to predict. I don't have a crystal ball, but to try to predict what may happen in the past, uh, the future and what, what you can do to, be, to prepare for that. So create scenarios, strategy. So my daily basis now is focus on strategy, working with numbers to try to prepare the best way possible the future and to, to win money with the investment on real estate. It's impossible to be prepared for everything, but my, my experience says that a lot of things you can have, let's say, a plan B and C that you can easily put in place if something, if a COVID appears, if a, a war uh, in, in Europe appears. So these kind of things with the history we have, it's relatively straightforward to, to work on it. Um, I'm I'm working in in a let's say not a yeah my my company is focused on distressed assets so I'm usually I I don't have the best office building in the center of the city I usually need to find a strategy for the office building that someone decided to build in the the middle of a countryside <laughs> um, so that's the kind of things that I'm working. So really, really big challenges. Uh, that's the, the, that I think otherwise I will not be so happy about what I do because it, everybody can value a, not a big, a good office building in the center of Lisbon, but probably just a few can value and think about an office building completely far away from everything. How many, uh, how, how big is your staff today in all those places and all those locations? Well, um, we are hiring every day. <laughs> so uh, we, we have currently in Europe four, four countries, Portugal, Spain, Italy, and Greece. Uh, we also have partnerships in South America. So between staff and technical team, uh, we are reaching almost 150 people nowadays, uh, different levels in the, all the countries we, we manage. Uh, so... I always think when when I reach the end of the month and I need to sign something. Uh, the reason why I'm asking about the amount of staff is because your concept of your business is mainly consulting. So what I'm interested in is how do you scale a consulting business? Many people are always wondering, is it possible? How to do it? Would love to hear your thoughts. If, if, if just give you an example. Um, the main driver of my company was to reduce the the all the all the things that you need to do that a machine can do okay in each country all my competitors have at least three or four times more people to do the same that my my staff does okay because we invested a lot in IT in machines doing let's say the hard work. So when my team needs to look into an asset uh, to do evaluation, 90% of the job is already done by the machine. And what the only thing they need to do is to put in front of the computer and think about it. So uh, the majority of my people, I'm paying them not to do, but to think, to come out of the box, look at the picture and think about solutions. Because what I saw in real estate is that people took a lot of time doing things that it's not value added, uh, that you need to do, but it's not value added. So that's why I focus on IT to reduce this time consuming of things that are not value added. And how do you build your business uh, um, around content, around marketing? What is the best 
Yeah, well, when you do advisory and when you put values, we are dealing with millions of euros. So people need to trust you, need to trust your knowledge. In all, all the ways of consultancy, if it's real estate or other thing, your clients need to trust you. Okay, So uh, that's why when we thought what, how we can reach more clients, how we can increase our clients' uh, network, we thought we can do marketing, we can do publicity, but you are saying, I'm the best, you trust us. That's not the best way to do it. They really need to understand that they can trust you. And that's when we decided that not investing in marketing, pure marketing, we decided to, in to invest in information in being trustable to the market. So when that's when we decided to create an online newspaper, just focus on real estate, where every day we publish everything that is happening in real estate. New development, new law, uh, this company is hiring this guy, uh, interviews about change of construction costs. Every day, all the market receives all the information from us. Even my competitor, he closed a deal. We published that. We interview the CEO of my biggest competitor. So it's an independent newspaper. It's focused on information and the way my business changed in the last two, three years after doing this, it's amazing because, and we invest zero in pure publicity. We invest in people, in journalists, in, in this kind of networking. And it was amazing, the return. Because people say, these guys, they know exactly what is happening. It's the best guys to hire. You started another business though. Completely different one. Nowadays... Nowadays, I have clients because this new online newspaper is already um, so spread and everybody have it. They, we, nowadays, we, are, we also have clients that want to put publicity in the newspaper. They want to do some partnerships to put some articles, some interviews. So it was something that we decided to create to promote like an investment. And we already reaching break even. And I think we will have very good profit profit this year with this this part of the business that initially was a center of costs it was to to, to promote the company and now it's changing completely the drive it's a, as you said a new business line but it's helping to leverage everything else in the group because aside being a specific business nowadays it's leveraging our knowledge and need also a super important thing it's my staff feels super proud to be a part of the group because with the newspaper, they can tell you in a wedding, in a, a party that I'm a part of that, of that company. I'm a part of that, of that newspaper and say, oh, that's amazing. You publish a huge amount of news and it's super interesting. And so more than clients, more than business, more than money, more than profit, uh, as I said from the beginning, I'm super focused on the on people, and what I really want is for my staff to be happy and to be proud of being part of the company. And I also achieved that with the newspaper. the The connection is the newspaper. The website is powered by your company. How do people make the connection? How do they know? Yeah. So basically, um, my main company, the name is Aura from this, let's say, uh, overwhelming things. And the newspaper and the platform is brains. So everything is here or above. <laughs> so mind or above. Because aura, it's something that is above your hair or head. Um, what, what we did was, in the beginning, it was uh, uh, aura connected with brains. We, we basically uh, invited some, some of our main clients to, to be there. And um, but then the newspaper, because we started this news a little bit before Brian's news. So in the beginning, we just with the journalists, we had a news a newsletter every day, not a, an online thing, a newsletter with some news. So people started 
connecting news with my company. Then when we launch the newspaper with a different name, um, they're already connecting this kind of news with Aura and it's completely merged today. So it's different names, completely merged and the market knowledge that is Brains and Aura, it's the same guys that can do this. But Matnir, we decided to give a different name because we really wanted for the newspaper to be independent. It's connected with Aura, but is independent. Everybody can publish it. We are talking about all the companies, not just about Aura, what we do. So we are not promoting our company. We almost don't publish anything that Aura did. We put some news there, but we publish probably way more news about what everybody is doing. And that's the key thing here, is the independency. Very interesting. Uh, the reason why I'm also asking, or two reasons. First of all, in my agency, Streetwise, we have a website that does content, but it's connected. Plus, we build media houses for other companies. And the second thing is um, a big part of why you and I are talking now is because we're building a content platform for EO, the Entrepreneurs' Organization, in Europe. And the idea is to bring the learnings of people like yourself and all the other amazing guests I've had and, and other shows we're now planning and to bring that to people who might not necessarily be EO material or maybe don't even have own businesses. Maybe there's students who want to learn from us. And and I think hearing you do that in real estate and executing is, is like mind blowing. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to hear these things when they work. Yeah. And, and Nia, the, the, the important thing is to go, it's, this is already, everybody speaks about this, but really going out of the box. When I say out of the box in this, it, I think it was super easy to create something completely connected with my company initially. It wasn't, I think it, it, it will be understandable from the market, uh, but we decided to do the opposite because we decided to do, okay, it's in some way connected, but market really think it's independent and that's and being 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 able to manage independently and one of the things people say, say to, uh, said to me in the recent past was why do you publish interviews to your main competitor in your newspaper you need to adv to advertise your businesses yes no but that's why I created a newspaper because what everybody does with their own newspapers is exactly that. They promote themselves. They are not completely exempt and independent as is the, the main, if, if you study journalists and if you, your passion is to deliver news, you know that it's important to be independent. It's important to think about the way you want to, to advertise uh, and to put your, your news there. And one of my critics in, 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 in this media world, I'm talking about TV, is newspapers, etc., is that usually they promote their collectoral businesses way more than the competitors. And being able to give uh, exposure to your competitors, I'm, I'm winning um, clients that work for my competitors without any commercial uh, effort because they say, this guy is amazing because he's showing the competitor because so he's completely free to work with everybody. He's not focused about, he's not afraid of anything. Uh, so when, 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 when you publish and when you give exposure to your client, to your competitors, the market percepts that, Okay, this guy is not afraid. He, he, he really trusts their guts. He really trusts the quality of the business. So I, I need to work with this guy. Uh, and that's that's what we are achieving nowadays. I like it. I feel the whole theme of this conversation is own it and execute. Yeah. yeah and um, I think... I, I always, I always, uh, we thought we, we speak about entrepreneurs and we have key different kinds of people in this world. Um, but you need to find, you have two important things that you need to have in your life. One, you need to focus and to fight to, uh, to your dreams is super important. Your personal, your business, you need to find a purpose and you need to fight it. Um, 
and you need to find the best version of yourself. I'm not talking. I'm not a, a guru and that, but but I'm I'm here today speaking with you with everything that I built in my personal and my business life because I always found the best version of me to put in everything I do in my life. And I think that's the key to any business, to any entrepreneur, to any young guy that goes to college is, is that. And it's not easy, but is the best way to get your happiness is to find that version of, your, of, your, of yourself. I completely agree. And, you know, I'm now finishing my third book and kind of like, have the, the option or the ability to step away from the business and sit at home alone all day and write and edit. By the way, it's a horrible process, but I'm going to finish it one day. And I always tell people, um, this was this is going to be the last book I write until I write the next one. And it, it takes time to find your your inner peace, your your process, what you want to achieve and everything. But as you said, keep pushing. You'll find it. On a personal note, I'm so happy we, we got the chance to speak again. I feel inspired. Thank you for this. Um, last words, where people can find you. Um, we'll also add your LinkedIn and everything else. Some last words. Well, uh, it's it's not difficult to find me because I'm everywhere. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, my, my final, final word is... What I always say to my mentees um, when uh, when I need to focus is that everybody has problems in their lives. Our life is not always amazing. Uh, I think it's difficult to have to know somebody that had a perfect life since the day they were born. We always need to fight against problems. Uh, what you need to to have in your life is to reduce the negative part of your life and the part that I'm, I panic and I need to, to find a solution, be focused on that part. And I, I, I really say this, you need to find yourself and the, what you really want to do with your life and to be happy. Um, somebody, somebody believe in other lives, other people don't believe in other lives. I, I, I will not discuss religion. What, uh, what is clear for me in all the religions is that at least this one is guaranteed. If it's more or not, that's a different discussion. You need to enjoy this life and you need to do everything to be happy every day. Sometimes it's not there. Sometimes you need to fight some things. Sometimes, sometimes you are in a bad mood, a big problem to solve. One of your friends died. Your, in my case, my father already died with a huge problem. Of course, that happens, but you need to find the focus. You need to find your inner peace. If it's in entrepreneurs, if it's in real estate, if it is in whatever. That's the, the message I always say to people who, uh, in these cases is more than business, getting money, a big house, you need to find your happiness. That's the, uh, the, if you find that, everything else will appear in your life. I love it. Jose, I want to say a huge thank you for being here. To everyone listening or watching, I want to say a huge thank you for um, being with us at the EOpreneur podcast. If you want something, if you have any questions, feel free to visit us on the website. There's the podcast and more shows and articles and information about so many different industries and so many amazing stories that people are doing all around Europe. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll see you on the next episode. My name is Neil Zavala. Thank you.